Growing up, I felt different. I was 35, and I take a DNA test. Right then, I knew Klein was our biological father. So that's when strange things started happening. So from inception um, to delivery, our father took almost four years. I have done at least 25 interviews. My crew consisted mainly of my producer, Michael Petrella, my cameraman, and an AC and sound. So five of us. We used Black Magics. We filmed all the interviews mainly in Indiana, where the story took place, and then recreations were shot in Los Angeles. When I opened up Ancestry, I had over 3,000 hints. All of these random names were popping up, and it said close family. We all matched the name Klein. Dr. Klein was the best infertility doctor in Indianapolis. For the uninitiated, could you explain what it is that this doctor did to his patients? Former Dr. Donald Klein secretly impregnated his patients without their consent. And some of those patients expected donor sperm. He was a fertility doctor. And many, many of them expected their husband's sperm to be used in the process. He violated them by using his own. Why do you think so many people were so hesitant to pick up this news story or to investigate this matter? Why did it take quite literally, Jacoba, to get involved. It blows my mind. I meet Jacoba. I've read the letters that she wrote to all the news outlets at the time. And to me, it was wildly compelling. And, you know, I've spoken to Angela at length, the reporter in the story, and she felt the same way, which is why she picked it up. I have no idea. I wish I could speak to it. I, I can't. Um, all I know is that there was no question in my mind that the story needed to be told. I reached out to every news outlet, big and small. There was a person of a position of power. He's known in our community as a philanthropist. He's an elder of the church. Talk me through your decision to recreate the moments in the 1970s with actors. What was the reasoning for that? And what did you want to represent in this film? The siblings have always wanted information from Klein and he has stonewalled them. He gives them nothing. And he really hides behind this kind of cloak of anonymity. And when I thought about this film, I wanted to put a face to it because he wasn't doing them that service. He was giving them nothing. And I didn't want to help him in that process. You know, if you didn't see a face, if you didn't see an actor, he would be getting away with it even more. But if I put a face to it, it's shocking. And, and the reenactments, for instance, you know, when Liz says, I feel like I was raped 15 times and didn't know it. If that is in a kind of talking heads documentary, I feel like the line might have been a throwaway because you can't understand what it feels like for that woman. But if I'm sitting there and Liz is telling me every minute detail of each visit, I reenacted and recreated that moment. So it's a visual cue for the audience. So they understand what she means when she says, I feel like I was raped. And you butt that up against a reenactment where you're watching this woman and you see how vulnerable we are when the door closes and our legs are in stirrups and a man is between our legs inseminating us. And I feel like that it had to have been seen. So the power of, of the words that she was saying hit. The majority of us live in a 25 mile radius of each other. I walk around and I can be related to anyone. I dread every new match that comes, but they just keep coming. The actor that you picked to play Klein were you all nervous that people would associate him with the actual Don Klein? It's interesting. Even in the uh, you know, comments from trailers, some people think it is Klein. The whole way, it was very important that the siblings they have their blessing. And I had spoken to Jacoba prior to, to casting and said I wanted to bring this face in. And I wanted her to interact with this actor. Because a lot of the time, you know, these people aren't actors. Jacoba is not an actress. And, you know, to have her relive a moment is, is going to be quite difficult. But if I recreate the moment exactly as it was, and I cast someone who looks so much like Klein, then there's this opportunity for her to experience it again with her kind of in the power chair. She told me, you know, when she met with Klein the first time, she had all these things she wanted to say, but it didn't come out. 
And when we shot those reenactments, it was fascinating because there was no audio while we shot them. And the actor was so good. And I had kind of prepped him based on things Jacoba had told me had happened at that meeting. And they were having this dialogue at the table. She had told me afterwards that the catharsis for that was, it was just really incredible for her because she got to say the things that she could never say. And so there was this kind of playing with that, that blur of real and not real and, and getting her involved in it, which I think was pretty awesome. And no, I wasn't worried that people would think it's, it's Klein. There's a scene that you stage where Jacoba has the hoodie on and she's in front of the wall of pictures trying to decipher her genealogy, her family tree. It felt so intentional. It felt like this hoodie meant something. I'm just curious, what was the the message behind that? What was the meaning behind that? The women in power, they wear red in the film. It was a through line I wanted to add. You know, her in that hoodie looking at the camera, echoes Klein looking at the camera. And at the end of the day, they share half their DNA. And so there's this sweet kind of moment where everything that he's doing to her, she's doing back to him. And so there's this parallel. And, you know, there, it is not lost on me, there is an ode to a Handmaid's Tale moment in it. Because, you know, this is the story of non-consent of women kind of being used as pawns, I think. And, uh, and I wanted to tip my hat to that. I think it was some sick experiment for him. Most of us have blonde hair, blue eyes. It was almost like this perfect Aryan clan. It's disgusting. Who had the strongest emotional reaction talking with you about this horrible occurrence that has altered their lives forever? I think, you know, for the mothers, it was really important for them to let the world know that this was a sexual violation to them. On paper, it's not rape. On paper, it's not these things as, as explained by the prosecuting attorney. But there's a sexual violation element that happens with the patients. And then there's a very different element that happens with the siblings and the children of his. They have to reconcile the fact that they find this out, that they think this man is cruel. And on top of that, they share half his DNA. One of them told me once that it's like the equivalent of finding out your father's a serial killer. To them, he's a serial rapist and that's your father. So if you take that point of view, as some did, they're affected a lot more than those who are able to kind of compartmentalize and put Klein in a different place. There's no one more victim than the other. It's, it's a very interesting rainbow. What is the current status of Don Klein? He is currently alive, living in Indiana. Um, and it's not a crime. What he did is not a crime. That's what the government says, correct? That's, that's what the government says. It's not a crime. The attorney general's office. I don't deny that it was a sexual violation, but legally there's just no crime that touches this particular act. And this film's coming out on Netflix in the middle of a very strong conversation about women's reproductive rights. What do you think our father contributed to that conversation? This film is about consent, right? It's about women having autonomy over their body. To have a man come in and decide what he wants to do with them and to do it because he thought they were absolutely desperate. It just fits into the conversation so nicely that, you know, oh, well, they were so desperate they wanted a child. What was so wrong with that? Well, how about, hey, I don't have a donor at the moment, but I'm happy to use my sample. Is that something you'd like? The fact that that was never even thought about, he took that, that choice away from them. And I think it is absolutely what's going on. <laughs> choice is being taken away. And I hope that audiences see what consent means. There's so many facets to it. And I think women should absolutely be able to make the choices for their body that they want. He wants me to keep quiet, but I will never back down. I will fight to expose all of your secrets.